In this video, we're going to dive into Google Webmaster Tools, which is also called Google Search Console. You want to think of it like Google's special Mickey Mouse Club. Join it and you and Google are in a special relationship. You get certain information from Google, plus you can communicate certain aspects of your website to Google. So it's a really important part of search engine optimization. Let's get started. First, let's look at some of the basic information that is available in Webmaster Tools. And again, I'm going to assume that you've signed up. I have the links in uh, the materials there. Uh, you can get at the bottom of YouTube. I've got the material uh, link there for Google Webmaster Tools and for Bing Webmaster Tools. And I'm going to assume that you have uh, enabled those. You have to verify your website. Okay, so let's go over to Google Webmaster Tools. And what I'm going to do is just sort of tour some of the most important uh, items out there. And you want to distinguish between uh, information available about your website. That's one of your benefits is that you learn about what's going on with your website vis-a-vis uh, -vis Google or Bing. And secondly, tools that they have that help you do things. So those are two different uh, aspects. So first we'll look at information, then we'll look at tools. Okay, so you're going to log in and then on the left hand side, let's just go down this column here. So this messages, let me see if I can zoom in for you guys a little bit better. So this left hand column here has messages and here's where you're going to learn if you're in trouble. So if you're being hacked, Google will send a message here and it'll say you've been hacked. Uh, or if you're subject to a penalty, it'll say you have been subjected to a manual spam penalty, for instance. So that message function is really important. Over here under the gear icon, you want to click on the gear icon, go to Search Console Preferences, and you want to make sure that you've enabled email notifications because that is going to alert you if you're in trouble. So that's very important uh, to have that turned on. All right, now let's look under search appearance, right? And uh, I'm going to kind of basically say, unless you are a genius, you can pretty much ignore this information. There is not much uh, here that's very helpful at this point in time. Now let's look at search analytics here. There is some information here that's quite interesting and Im important. So search analytics, and then you're going to get this default screen uh, which in typical Google fashion is pretty useless. Uh, so what you want to do is click Impressions and CTR and Position. So the default is just clicks, which I find to be nearly useless. So turn on Clicks, Impressions, CTR, and Position. And then what this will tell you, which is interesting, is it tells me here that for the query AdWords coupon, I've gotten 70 clicks and my average rank was uh, 8.7. And what you can do is just try that search that you're showing. So AdWords coupons and then see kind of like what my rank is here. So you can see here I'm actually ranking about number five. So uh, this is a good example that, you know, this is useful. It tells you kind of what data people are searching. What is the query? Uh, all of this click and impression data, in my humble opinion, is highly inaccurate. So it doesn't seem to actually reflect your true position. Lord knows if the impressions or clicks are accurate either. And I know this isn't true because I can see in Google Analytics I have a lot more data. So I would basically say, you know, use this on the right as kind of a heuristic about what's actually happening. Don't take it too seriously. But I am interested here, and so for instance, I've started to blog um, on SEO conferences 2017, and that's giving me some sense of um, am I showing. And I don't know if you click there if it, it does open it. So they've actually done that and made it a little bit nicer. So you can see here, I have a nice little blog post on upcoming SEO conferences, and I'm ranking about number four or five on that, and I am getting some traffic. So I do like to look at uh, this left-hand column here, which is telling me what searches I do have some performance for. And I'm just sort of curious if there's anything um, that's unusual that I might learn from there. All of this data, always take it with a grain of salt. 
Let's look at links to your site. This is pretty interesting. Uh, go and click on the More tab here. This is going to tell you who links to you. You can click Download Latest Links. You can open that up as a CSV document. And then when that's opened, presto, you can see who links to you and when it was first discovered. So that's pretty interesting data uh, to kind of, you know, as you're working on your link uh, building, you can see is Google discovering those uh, links. So I like to use that data just kind of as a checkup uh, um, what's going on. That's pretty interesting. Uh, international targeting, click on the country tab. You should tell Google to target users in your country that you want to target, sort of a pro forma uh, sort of thing. Uh, mobile usability here, uh, also pretty interesting. This is going to give you some data about whether your website has any problems with mobile because Google is sort of a mobile first uh, company these days. So that's good. So there's some good information here, just especially on the data in search analytics. Take that with a grain of salt. I don't think it's um, particularly accurate. All right, let's look at the Google index. This tells us sort of, are we being indexed? Uh, 878 pages are being indexed. Content keywords gives us some rough idea. Is it seeing the keywords that I want to see? So our site, of course, is on SEO and social media. And you can see here that uh, in our content keywords, we're matching our targets. So if you were to see keywords here that weren't relevant, then you'd know you're kind of having a communicative problem uh, with Google there. So that's kind of uh, helpful. And this index is telling you how many pages it has discovered about your website. Uh, I have a link here as well. You can use the site colon command and you can see here 874 and you can see here 878. They don't always agree. This data is not uh, particularly accurate. Again, kind of despite what Google uh, positions itself as, a lot of the data is kind of slipshod. Uh, in these tools doesn't really make any sense why it's like that all right let's look at the left crawl errors obviously if you're in trouble you're going to have a lot of crawl errors here so i'm not having a lot of errors no big deal crawl stats this is am i being indexed am i being crawled so it's just sort of like your google heartbeat i want to know that i'm getting indexed fetches google i'm going to return time to return to these three in a second because those are really more tools security issues this is where if you were being hacked you would get some information there um, as well uh, other resources they have uh, some other e resources i do want to point out the webmaster academy this is sort of the official google school of seo um, it's useful uh, it's the official prop propaganda official party line on seo so so take i kind of have this pun in here i say you know it's like driving school does that really teach you how to drive right or school itself does that really teach you how the world works right so it's the same it's useful but take it with a grain of salt as mark twain said don't let your schooling get in the way of your education they're two different things Now let's look at some of the tools. So the first part of this was sort of the information resources available in Google Webmaster Tools that would help you understand what's going on with your website. Now let's look at some tools. So uh, first one is the preferred domain. So for instance, you'll notice if you go to https jm-seo.org, that's gonna reset to www, which is our preferred domain. So we have a preferred domain set by our server. We want Google to do the same. So in Search Console, you can go up to your gear icon, site settings, and you can set a preferred domain. And you want to do this. This is so that you have one and only one uh, type of um, uh, URL showing in the Google index. So that's a useful tool, sort of housekeeping. Uh, HTML improvements. This is where Google is going to give you uh, some information over here uh, on whether you have duplication. So this tells you, uh, do you have duplicate meta descriptions? Do you have duplicate titles? Are they too short? And you can drill through them and it will actually tell you what pages on your website have duplicate um, information, which is a duplicate content problem. International targeting I covered. Let's talk about the crawl aspect here. 
So go over here to crawl and let's look at fetch as Google. So uh, I've sort of pitched this as the Google Mickey Mouse Club. I recommend that you join it. It gives you a lot of good information. It also gives you some special perks, some special capabilities. So what happens is, let me show you. So this is actually just up on my own blog here. I'll just show you. So I just put this up on the blog. So it's obviously not going to be in the Google index. So I'm going to right click, copy, then I'm going to go to Google, just regular old Google here. And I'm going to type in site colon and then paste that URL. So site colon and the whole URL I just created, and I'm gonna hit Google search. And you're gonna see here that when I enter site colon and the URL of my blog post, that I get a bunch of garbage down here. That's telling me that Google does not know this blog exists. Now, if it did know the blog existed, right? So let me find one uh, that it does know about. Okay, so let's go back in time here. So let's choose one that's older. Let's see if I can find one real quick that it knows. Okay, if it does know, you put in site colon no space in the blog URL, and you can see here it's discovered it. It knows it exists. So this one, it doesn't know it exists, so I want to tell it it exists. So I'm going to copy this URL after the domain. Control C as in Charlie, or right click, copy. And then I'm going to right click, paste, and then I'm going to hit fetch. So, what you're doing here is you have your website domain, and then you have a blog post, um, an, a product page, some new content, and you want Google to discover it. So, you're going to click fetch. You can do it in the desktop version. So, this is a really important feature. So, you do fetch. And then it says complete and you hit submit to index. So you put it in here, fetch, complete, submit to index. Hopefully you're not, you are not a robot. And then you click either crawl only this URL or if you want to kind of kick in the pants to re-index your whole site, click crawl this URL and its direct links and hit go. So this is a way of saying to Google, I've created some new content. I would like you to find it. You can also just do it with your home page. Just leave it blank fetch and then submit to index and if it's your home page hopefully you are not a robot click i'm not a robot and then click crawl this url and its direct links hit go and this is a way to again to kind of kick google and get it to index re-index your new content so that fetches google uh, i would say that's really um important related uh important is messages. If you've been hacked, you want to know about it, that's probably the most important feature of Webmaster Tool. Or if you're in trouble, if you've gotten a penalty from Google because you're naughty, that would also be important to know. Fetch as Google, I would say, is probably the second most important uh, uh, asset here uh, as part of the Mickey Mouse Club. Robots.txt tester, this will tell you if you're in trouble, if you're not, if you're getting warnings here, this is like if you're really blocked. Sitemaps, you can submit a sitemap to Google over here on the right, which is just an XML sitemap, it's a little bit of a nerd speak. If you're using WordPress, you can use a plugin to create the XML sitemap, marginally beneficial. URL parameters, if you are so stupid that you are using a URL parameter, which is question marks, parameter IDs, um, session IDs, any of this garbage, uh, you're already in trouble with your SEO. Please don't do this. This is really bad. But this is a Band-Aid. You can try to fix it in Webmaster Tools. Security issues, that's where if you were hacked would be there. Uh, other tools, they have the PageSpeed's Insights. This is where you can put your website in here, HTTPS, and I'll put our website in here, and I'm going to hit Analyze. This used to be in Webmaster Tools, then they took it out, then they put it in, then they took it out, then they put it in, then they took it out, then they put it in, then they renamed it, then they changed it. That's how Google rolls. It doesn't make any sense why they do this. Right now, it's not in Webmaster Tools. I think it's in Analytics now. It's also here. This tells you... Uh, how, you know, what do you look like on the phone? Um, anything over about 65 over 60 is probably pretty good. This is going to go up and down a little bit because the server speed is a little bit slow. So it helps 
you tell your speed and gives you some information. It's a great tool, typical Google, great tool. They just do a bad job naming things, keeping things in order. So that tool is important. There's also a tool called the Disavow Links tool, uh, which is part of Webmaster Tools, but not really um, connected to the main interface. Lord only knows why. Uh, do not use the disavow links tool unless you are a an expert and b are really desperate it is a very controversial tool uh, i do not recommend using it but i did want to point that out to you that it does uh, exist there Finally, let's talk just a second about Bing Webmaster Tools. It's essentially the same as the Google Tools. Uh, they do have two features which I want to show to you. So let me drag over uh, Bing Webmaster Tools here. So I'm logged into my Bing uh, Webmaster Tools. Uh, and a couple tools I think that are good. Keyword research. So if you don't have an AdWords account, you can put in a keyword, you know, motorcycle insurance or something, whatever you're going after, and it'll give you some information uh, about search volume and uh, what's out there and, and what's what you might l look at. So that's kind of an interesting uh, little tool there uh, that's available. Uh, the links tool is also pretty interesting. So inbound links on the Google uh, tool just tells you who links to you. On the Bing tool, you can uh, click in into the link count and it will give you the anchor text. Uh, so this is helpful because it can tell if you're over optimized. So we have a fair number of websites that link to us and it gives me a sense of am I getting branded or non-branded or keyword text, et cetera. So the Bing tool has a couple unique features uh, that the Google tool does not. Okay, so let's wrap up what we've learned. So point number one is you want to sign up for the Search Console, otherwise known as the Google Webmaster Tools. You also want to sign up uh, for the Bing Webmaster Tools. These are both kind of the relevant Mickey Mouse clubs so that you can communicate with Google or Bing. Secondly, you want to go and see the information that you can get around your website, about your website. Uh, the search analytics data, I think, is probably the most important data there. It tells you kind of like, are you being discovered? What types of keywords are you ranking for? A little bit of sort of uh, confirmation that you're ranking for relevant search queries. Links to your site in both of these. Are those links being discovered by Google or Bing? The rest is pretty uh, straightforward there in terms of information. Uh, Next, we learned about the available tools. I would say the first and most important is the messaging, so that if you're in ha being hacked, you will know. And then Fetch as Google is a very valuable uh, asset to get content indexed rapidly by Google. Finally, with respect to Bing Webmaster Tools, we learned that the link tool and the keyword tool have a little extra functionality uh, that you don't have in the Google Search Console uh, location. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please put them in the YouTube comments.